Welcome back to another video. This is Antonio Hicksmith, the Escape in the Matrix. So Apple had their WWDC today, uh, WWDC 24. And I mean, it's, it's typically about software. They do announce hardware every now and then. But for the most part, this was really all about the software from Mac OS to iPad OS to iOS to Watch OS. And, you know, some of the new features is coming out. I'm not talking about any of those. <laughs> I mean, if y'all want to go check those out, they're on uh, Apple's website. The one thing I am going to talk about, which you've seen some of my other previous videos beforehand, is about AI and how they integrated AI into that. So Apple announced, well, I don't even know if they even made an announcement. But it was announced they had built a partnership and invested in uh, OpenAI's, their uh, LLMs and their, their machine learning platform, or their, their language models and whatnot. And so everybody was interested to see how they were going to get pushed into Apple's uh, ecosystem and how they were going to work. Because, I mean, it, it, one thing that everybody's been looking at and everybody's been making their announcement. I mean, when I say everybody, I mean, all the major tech companies are making their announcement, how they're pushing AI, AI how AI has integrated into their stuff from Microsoft to uh, Google and some integrating into their workspace and other stuff. Even though Google has been around and been doing AI a lot longer than some of these other people. So everybody's waiting to see, and Facebook as well too, uh, what Apple was going to do, if Apple was going to do anything at all. So for Apple to come out today with uh, to talk about at the end of the keynote, because I, you know, I was I was I was threading because I don't I don't do no tweet, I don't I don't get around in in Twitter or X anymore. I I just don't do that. So I'm on I'm on threads. I will take threads <laughs> over Twitter, Twitter any day. But so I'm talking to somebody else on threads and we were talking about the keynote and they were saying that, oh, well, they haven't mentioned chat GPT yet. And right when they said that, that's when they was talking about the announcement. But you knew it was coming because throughout the whole announcement of other the other software features they have coming out, they kept talking about machine learning. So it was always machine learning this, machine learning that. So I was like, OK, they're waiting to they're, they're building it up to talk about, you know, what they're going to do with open AIs, chat GPT, their uh, APIs into their systems. And sure enough, they did it and they came out with their own thing. They're, they're a play on AI to call it Apple intelligence. And I'm going to say I, I'm actually surprised by it. not surprised in a bad way, surprised in a good way, a very good way, because I think AI is a, a tool that a lot of us should be learning or a lot of us should be using in some of our day to day stuff. I don't care what anybody says. It should be we should be using it in our day to day stuff. So the Apple to talk about it and bring it out into their keynote and how they're going to bake it into Mac OS and iOS and things. I'm like, it, this is a great tool for any Mac users and some of the major things that they're going to be using. I mean, you have to pay for this stuff. Now with Apple, with Apple is free. So you have to pay for it. Like you have to pay for a lot of stuff with like chat GPT and with Google's Gemini. Like Google's Gemini will give you some advanced features. And they, I mean, Google does have Gemini baked into its workspace. And it's, I mean, it's some of the same stuff that Apple announced today. Google has it built into their platform and it had always been there, but it's been cooked in there for the past, I think three weeks now, three weeks to a month now since they made their announcement at uh, the Google, their, their, uh, their conference. So with Apple bringing it out on theirs, I mean, you're talking about, especially on iOS, you're talking about iOS, you can now actually uh, message Siri. That's something great in itself to actually be able to type something out to Siri and ask it a question and have it come back to you to actually be able to do shorthand stuff on all your text messages to uh, summarize notes. And, and, and some of the key features that even I asked about because I went to the Google Rise Summit. I, I plan on making a video about that. I'm slow in doing it, but I've been slow. in. if y'all saw my last video, <laughs> I've been slow with uh, coming back and doing any creation. Personal thing going on. But anyway. One of the questions I asked at the Google Rise Summit, and if y'all don't know what a Google Rise Summit is, it's a new conference they started this year, or some of them started this year for minority and black owned businesses, because you know I have my, my business engineering tomorrow. Um, and I, so I, I, I went to it, well I got accepted to go to it. One of the key things I asked about at the conference itself was, in one of their breakout sessions, is how you can utilize your API to work with something like what, what project I've been working on before called multi-access edge computing and how you can integrate the API to where it can pull data from your locally based stuff and not have it security wise integrate into your the cloud based stuff. So if I'm asking the um, Gemini a question, it won't necessarily have all of my personal data information stored within the cloud itself. So other people don't have access to it, not even developers at Gemini, but it could pull it locally from like a, my home mix systems within my own house or my business or whatever. And then anything that I want to ask it that's, that, that's not local, it's, it's, it can pull from the cloud itself utilizing this API. Apple did that. And I give Apple props for that 100%. Google has a, still have a ton of features that Apple is doing, but I still give Apple that 100% to where it can actually pull from your data locally without storing it to the cloud. 
and anything that goes into the cloud is already encrypted. So it has a full fledged encryption from all your data going up into like when you're asking serial questions, it'll actually bring all this stuff together. we not have anybody have access to it with it being 100% encrypted. So even the, the, the software itself doesn't even have access to it. So you can ask it personal stuff and have it listed out for you. To me, that is a key feature that nobody has rolled out yet. And sure enough, it had to be Apple that did that. So I'm excited. I have a developer's uh, license with them. So I'm excited to try out some of this stuff because I think this is great. I mean, some of the stuff they have with their uh, their own editing stuff, like with uh, Pages, uh, Keynote, and all those things. I mean, it's so different than what Google has with Workspace. It being able to summarize email, Google has it built into its Gmail stuff. So a lot of the same features that Apple has come out with, Google has rolled out, like I said, with their AI stuff. Google still has one thing with a video tool that you can be to create videos from text. Apple has not done it yet, but they did say they have other stuff coming out uh, later on this year. They, they plan on working on working on with other uh, language models or you know companies, I guess, to say, okay, what they're going to bring <clears throat> into their system. But the key stuff that Google did not do with theirs, which is crazy to me, because you would think because they've always they've always been doing AI, they would have thought about it, especially on like I have, a, I mean, I got a Pixel phone. So they have Gemini baked into Pixel now to where you can, you know, you can text Pixel, you can add, I mean, Pixel, you can text Gemini through your actual messaging app and have conversation, but it doesn't create images within the messaging app. So for Apple to cook all of this stuff within the Mac OS, iPad OS and iOS, and you can ask for questions and it'll search through emails and your text messages and it'll actually list it out for you on the home screen. And you can actually search within your own, um, your, your, your pictures to pull out certain things within to scrape data across all your pictures and videos. That is fire. That is fire. You can ask it to do a ton of stuff, which Jim and I cannot do as of yet from locally stuff that you have on your local computer. That is great. And it's, and it's free. So that's the biggest thing that I think people really have to focus on is that if you are a Mac user and you have it on the iPad, you have a MacBook, and or you have an iPhone and all this stuff is coming to you for free, that is a large selling tool for them. And I think they should be pushing that a whole lot more because it's good to see now they've actually trying to work towards uh, fixing Siri. Because Siri is, I mean, you know, everybody knows Siri is trash. I mean, Siri is trash. But now that you have, you have OpenAI's model, language model uh, broke, baked into it, I, it's gonna give some people a run for their money. Even I mean, Copilot is the same way too. I mean, even if y'all don't know about Microsoft Copilot, Co I mean, Microsoft is one of the largest investors into uh, OpenAI. So they have they put you know OpenAI's language model into their systems with Copilot. <clears throat> so to see Apple do it its own way. I'm excited about this. Like, I'm really excited about this. I think everybody should be too, because I think AI is, is a tool that can help you out with your business. I, I mean, is I'm I keep, I keep saying I am really excited about this. So I just want to jump in here real quick and talk about the uh, keynote they just had for WWDC 24, and just talk about the Apple's intelligence. <laughs> I mean, it just, the play on the words. So, uh, and I mean, you can say I'm a fanboy. I'm not a fanboy. I'm just looking at how people are going to use AI and how they're going to build it within their own workspaces. Hi, hash the hell workspace. Uh, it's the same thing like Google did with their same thing as Microsoft has done with it. Same thing Facebook has done with AI within their stuff, and so on and so forth. So I mean, I think Apple's version of it, and then for you to be get some of the key features on it that you have to pay for with OpenAI. And with uh, Gemini, I think it's a, it's a large selling tool and something that all Mac users should, should be excited about. So, thank y'all for tuning in. I hope y'all uh, hope y'all check out the key, keynote. If you not, if you have not, because I'm sure some of y'all at work, go and uh, check it out. Look at some of the new software features coming out for Mac OS, iOS, iPad OS. But anyway. Thank you for tuning in to this episode. Make sure too, if y'all are looking to get a podcast going or y'all trying to do any form of like content creation that's involving ads and you and, and doing video audio editing and stuff, I do have a book that's out and I'm going to keep talking about it. The Ultimate Technical Guide to Creating a Podcast. It is available now on my website, pgtv.online. You can get it there. You can schedule a one-on-one. -on -one. If you get stuck anywhere in that book and you get a free consultation with me where I can help you out, I can actually show you how to edit some stuff to uh, all for free. So go to my website, pgdtv.online, get the ultimate technical guide to creating a podcast. And to the next episode, make sure y'all go check out the WWDC for all y'all Mac users out there. And if you're not Mac users and you're trying to figure out if you want to get onto it, I think this is a large selling tool compared to Google. Google don't really have any, I mean, hardware. I mean, they got Chromebooks, but eh, I mean, it's not their personal stuff. So to actually have it integrated with into uh, Mac Silicon, 
I think is a hot thing. So thank y'all again for tuning in. I know I keep saying it, but thank y'all for tuning in again. Until next time, Matrix out.